is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. I am the director of marketing and media for Warrior Rising. Here we talk to incredible veterans, highlighting their experiences and talking about their businesses, their successes, failures, and whatever else they want to talk to. So here I have Zach Houston. He is the owner operator of Pillars of Valor. And I'm so excited to have him here. He was at the Iowa Business Shower 2024. So I'm excited to jump right in. Welcome, Zach. Alyssa, thanks. Uh, I, you know, this is a distinct honor and privilege to be here. I, you know, I, we went down to Iowa, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. we got a chance to meet. It's a really funny story. Can I share the, the story of the, the, how I like hooked up with you on like a phone conversation oh. that <laughs> over LinkedIn? Yeah. Oh, so my God. We, we're trying to get a hold of each other and, um, we were, we were trying to get communicate comms going. And I'm like, God, it's, it's like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And I'm, how do I just get a hold of her, right? Like, because like yeah. this is getting like I hate the back and forth. So I yeah. go to LinkedIn, and by the way, this is no longer existing there. And yes, so if anyone's interested, like, not there. And I'm like, oh, because I went and I looked, and I'm like, oh, her number's right there. So I grab the number and I pick it up and call because like that's what most people do is just call. And <laughs> I get this, I, I leave her a message and, and I shoot her a text, and she's like, how did you get my number? And I'm like, yeah, it's on LinkedIn. And she's Never like. Knew. She's like, dude, you're like a stage five player. <laughs> it's just so funny, though, because I'm like, that's concern. It could have been really concerning had other people noticed. But luckily, no one was interested in anything I was producing, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Super <laughs> funny. But um, no, it's good stuff. Yeah, we uh, it, it, it's it was really fun to go down to Iowa. I'm, I'm yeah. originally from Iowa. So being able to represent not only the military community, um, but Warrior Rising in Iowa was was really special to me specifically. So. Yeah, awesome. So then jump right in. Tell us, what was your key takeaways from Iowa? What was that experience like, the Warrior Rising experience, but also what did you walk away with? And key takeaways, what I walk away with overall experience. Um, those are the three questions I heard. So key takeaways out of the gate, transformational is the yeah. word that I would use to describe it. Um, so Warrior Rising for me is, you know, I didn't really know what I got into. It's kind of like this, this thing. And I signed up for it. I met Ken Venera through networking, mm -hmm. who's he's he, you know, he's one of the leaders in the organization. And so I, I hooked in, got, you know, got connected with it, went through the program. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the business world. Like, I don't need this. Right. Yeah. And like, I, I'm in. I, you know, I, I don't need this. But, um, you know, put, setting the ego aside, uh, it, it, it was been it, it's been phenomenal for me to be able to. Um, really set the, like, as I said, set the ego aside and be able to learn and ask questions in, you know, a very simplistic format and learn from others of the, you know, the things that you learn through hard knocks or, or going through an MBA program. And that's transformational is the word I would use. What else did I take away from it? I'm going to say a tribe, yeah. right? And it's, it's a people that you can wholeheartedly lean into, ask questions, spin to networks, resources, to, to to really help level up and it's it, you know people say oh it's a, it you know they talk about handouts and and give outs and all those things it's absolutely not yep. it's it, it's a hand up and it's it's a way to help you get tools and resources to accelerate growth in your business so i tell every veteran that i come across to go sign up dig in and learn how to accelerate growth in your network for whatever you're doing, whether you have a business today or you're going to potentially think about it tomorrow, dig in and expand your network with Warrior Rising. Um, from an experience standpoint, man, I can't. I was blown away. The the people that come to it, the show, the experience, and just like the goosebumps you get from it, from from what happens and the feeling of camaraderie that comes from it and the connectedness. I haven't been a part of something like it. Yeah, I love to hear that. And it's an at your own pace type thing. And they have the app coming out. I mean, that's it's so incredible for for veterans in those classes. They're hosted, you know, late at night so that if people are working jobs or like still in the military, they can make these courses. So it's just it's really been awesome to see it evolve and to hear everyone's different experiences with it. But um, I want to get talking about your company. 
Uh, I will tell you personally, when I heard your story, I was very fortunate to be in the room when everyone pitched their businesses. I think it's a very special time. Um, and I wish everyone got to see it, but you had really brought a different meaning to a, what could be a simple cup of coffee. Kind of explain to us Pillars of Valor, what's behind it and whatever you want to share about your business, because it really is truly incredible. Yeah. Um, well, Pillars of Valor is a personal mission for me. It's about overcoming moments in life that really define you and it helps people resilience and you know we talk like the veteran community we talk a lot about numbers of 22 a day 22 uh -huh. to 40 a day of uh, being in dark spots I, I almost was there like i'm a normal guy uh, you know and uh, i let life bundle up on me and i let things get to a point where it was unhealthy and I was lucky to have some great resources and people around me to help me. And uh, I had to pick up a phone and call someone. Yeah. And in that, the coffee company was born, Pillars of Valor. And I'm fast forwarding through a whole bunch of stuff. But I share that story with people to hope maybe give them some encouragement to say, it's okay to like say you need help. And yeah. it's okay to say, man, I'm, I'm struggling. Like, have somebody to call. And the, the impetus of what Pillars of Valor is really about is slowing down, taking a deep breath, collecting your thoughts, and inviting someone to have a conversation with you or inviting someone to have just a cup of coffee. And mm -hmm. the, the concept is that, man, so much can be solved by talking to somebody. And, I, you know, coffee is such an inviting way to have a conversation and just sit face to face with somebody and, like, look somebody in the eyes and have a conversation. So. That's what Pillars of Valor is all about. And it's founded on the principle of one thing, to raise money, to pay it forward to fellow veterans. So it's all about connecting communities and veterans through coffee. It's pretty simple. Um, and it's, a, uh, it's about a brand of unity and bringing people together in a non-threatening way. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, my vision and my dreams for this is to have it be a movement and have it be... Um, this huge thing that people are proud of. They want to set it on their counter, the bag, because it's got an elegant design and it mm -hmm. stands for something bigger than just a coffee. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I have to say, I have some bags here and they're, they're definitely on display in my little coffee section because I'm a coffee fanatic. As you can tell, I'm drinking it now because there is no time that is a wrong time for coffee, in my opinion. <laughs> Love you know, coffee. I, you know, thank you for that. You know, and it's, it's really yeah. like, I got this little saying, like, stop, grind, breathe, and brew. Right. Just that little moment of like opening up that bag of whole beans, taking a breath of it, grinding it up and like giving yourself that that moment to pause and think and then brewing that cup of coffee. Right. Yeah. And it's 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 almost like that ritual of brewing that cup of coffee gives you just a chance to like be present and just think for a second. That stop, mm -hmm. pause and think. Um, that's really what it's about for me, because yeah. that, that could literally save someone's life. Absolutely. Using all five of your senses. When you feel like you're under anxiety, start to close your eyes. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? Sound, you know, hear all those different things. Like that's, that's something I used to have to do even just to get to sleep because I would have sleep anxiety because I'm thinking of things constantly. So I'm like, okay, let's just be visual. Let's like think of different things and hear things. So one of my favorite questions to ask and the most popular question a lot of people will ask entrepreneurs is work-life balance, right? How do you balance a personal life at at the same time as the crazy demands of entrepreneurship. You know, I have my own podcast and I ask people this question. Yeah. What is that? And so sitting on the other end of this, it's you know, I I I'm gonna go back to one of my one of my mentors, Sorelli, and I asked him the same question. And he he was telling me about a time he interviewed Shark. Yeah. And and the conversation really resonates with me. He's like, balance? balance there's no such thing as balance mm -hmm. and i'm like well okay and i really I, I really view it as this is hard to fully achieve and that was kind of the premise of the conversation we had because it what 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 it does is it's it's like this harmony of things and when one thing gets out of when, when there's an extra vibration over here or over here you got to pay more attention to it so you're never going to get equal balance and harmony 
what you can do is you can tell when something starts to get out of sync. Yep. And when it, something gets out of sync, you have to shift your attention. And I'm going to tell you what, and my wife would tell you the same thing. I suck at it. Like, I haven't figured this out. And it, like, if she can hear me right now because she's like in the other room, she would tell you, like, I suck at this. And so I don't I don't have a good answer to it other than mm -hmm. uh, I know that you, you have to stop. You have to make intentional decisions at it. Yeah. And um, you have to prioritize. And like, I'm still learning. And yeah. Because I, I want to do everything. Like, I, I just like, I run you. around and I'm like, man, I want to like I want to help everyone. I want to do all these things. And yeah, that's, um, she has to reel me in. You got to have that support system that understands that. That's that's the biggest thing that I, I would take away or I would give other people is like you have to prioritize because you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but there's, you know, you can't do everything. Right. So, um, so let me ask you a different type of question. So any aspiring veteran entrepreneur, they're transitioning, whatever stage of the process they're in, what are your most valuable piece of is pieces of advice for them to start up their own business, whether they have an idea or not. First thing you have to do is write it down. What is it? Then, once you figured it out, one of the biggest advice, pieces of advice and information I learned going through Warrior Rising is, what does it look like to end? Which is the weirdest thing to think about. Mm. But like, what does the exit strategy look like? So if you were to ever end it, what does that mean to you? And I found that so paradoxical. Um, and, you know, John is part of the, the Warrior Rising organization um from full of capital also he you know he like he he harped on that and he taught us uh to think about that and the one of the other things that i learned was use your money last figure out how to get your idea funded or to start your business without using your money have a great idea figure out how to get funding for it without bootstrapping bootstrapping yep. should be your last idea Interesting. Um, yeah. another point that i would add is learn how to give in the community more than you take. I say that because a lot of people go around and they try to just take, 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 take. Look at how you can support others first before you take. And because everyone, everyone needs help, right? And if you all you do is go around and you're the leech, you're going to be known as the leech. So look at how you can pay it forward to others. And that it'll it'll pay dividends to your to your future success because everyone is looking for that. So always be on the lookout for others and they'll do the same for you. Yeah, absolutely. I love those tips and they're very important because there's a lot of people out there. I wish that I had known that becoming an entrepreneur was an option leaving the military. I don't come from an entrepreneurship background. No one owns businesses in my family, at least for many generations they haven't. So that's very interesting. And so tell me, I know you have a big like community piece. What um what's in the future? What is on the horizon? Do you have any collaborations, um, community work? What what are you working on? Yeah, I got some fun stuff in the works. Uh, you know, what what's interesting is the more that you get out in the community and you start to talk to people, the more natively you'll find the pulse of what your thing is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of morphed into what the community wants it to be, right? And so I have yep. a vision of what where where I want it to go, but it, it's fun because as I've done coffee tastings of my product and I've sat at grocery stores and I've had people sample it and I've heard what they've had to say, it's fun to see how they embody it and how people react to it and what they think of it. And I've had more unique opportunities come up of it with partnership ideas and um where it could potentially go than I've ever even thought of or imagined just by being yeah. present in the community and just sharing the story. And so, um, you know, one of the things that's popped up is like, how can I do strategic partnerships with other nonprofits where my brand and partnership with a nonprofit is directly fueled to help fund nonprofits? So yeah. as an example, uh, Rising, it just uses as an example where I have a roast specific to Warrior Rising, hypothetically, and every bag that is sold with the Warrior Rising brand on it have a, a direct dollar value go to Warrior Rising. So people who bought that roast would know that when I buy this brand that I love, there's a Valor, and I love this flavor of roast, this roast profile, I'm directly supporting this nonprofit that I believe so heartily in. Yeah. 
and so I've had a couple things like that pop up that um and 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 uh, I'm really proud of like I'm on the on the cusp of like having one of those launch. That's and, awesome. Um, there's there's another one that I'm really close on launching with a, a really large organization. Um, that uh, they're looking at using it as a way to help fund their internal um, military uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion program. Awesome. And so they're going to use it as a way to fund their internal programs by uh, reselling the product internally within their organization. And it's going to fund their veteran themed programs. Wow. At a really large organization. I I never even thought about that. And it was something that, you know, we talked about together and I'm super proud of like partnering with them and, and helping them achieve that. Because at the end of the day, my mission is connecting communities and veterans through coffee period. And it's all about raising money to support veterans, period. And so uh, like, it it makes me happy to be able to have these conversations with these large organizations and, um, you know, walk the walk, not just talking. A hundred percent. I totally agree. Um, And that kind of leads me to another question is, you know, how do you, or what tips do you have, or how would you um, help keep people inspired if they're looking at something like coffee or supplements, something that seems saturated, how do you do it differently? How do you encourage them to, if that's what you're passionate about, go for it because you're going to take, put your own spin on it anyways. But for yeah. some, especially I'm in the you know fitness world and it's very daunting when it's a very saturated industry. Um, so how do you encourage others to stay true to themselves and to stay on that path if they're interested in something? Every person that I initially told that this is what I'm doing said, don't do it. Interesting. You, you can't do it. How are you different than company A? We all know that company. I, I don't need to say it. Um, and, you know, I still get that to this day. And then as it, my brand has started to grow and get a little bit more brand equity, people people stop asking me that question because they can just, they associate with it now and they start to see it. But you, and if you believe in it, it's okay. Like coffee, as an example, is the second largest traded commodity in the world. Think about that. So there's always space for something different. And if like you're, for yourself or as a fitness company, if you're thinking about having a fitness company, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of different banners and things that people associate with and different types of subgroups that they can associate with. And mm-hmm. all of those things come together and people do it for different reasons. It could be um, they just like the person, right? Or they like the cause. They like... They, they like how the logo looks, you know? I mean, there, mm-hmm. there's there's different reasons. So if you're passionate and you believe in it and, and there's it solves a, it solves a need in the market and you can see a path to it, go do it. Try it. Absolutely. And if, it, if it doesn't work, okay. At least you had the guts to do it. Yeah. You know what? Like my goal at the end of the day of all of this is how many homes can I build for people? Like that's, like there's nothing better than giving someone a home. If I can do that, man, like I get goosebumps thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Like that's my inspiration is like how many veterans can we house? Yeah. How many different lives can we impact along the way? For me, it's not about how many bags of coffee I sell. It's about how many different dollars can we raise to make impacts on veterans and like locally in the community. Like this last weekend I just took I took somebody to the um Chenny Castney and Zach Brown concert wow. and I was able to I was able to like help them fulfill a thing. And because of Warrior Rising, get this, because (laughs) of Warrior Rising, I was able to make a connection into the Zach Brown band. Wow. All right, get that. And when we were at the concert, they came up and they gave us swag and made it extra special for that veteran. Wow. Now talk about being on the path of like doing good. Mm -hmm. Like I cried. (laughs) I cried. Because mm. people are believing in my brand and what I'm doing and helping support those things where I can continue to pay it forward. Like, that's the type of impact that I'm talking about. Like, mm. I'm not taking no. I'm going to, like, I'm in this to, like, make an impact for people and make change. Yeah. And if you believe that in your heart and you know that you're doing those things for the right reason, take the brakes off and run. Yeah. No, I love that. It made me all emotional and get goosebumps and stuff. That's it's exciting. And I mean, the the network that you get with working with Warrior Rising, going to events, doing the Warrior Academy, like it's unparalleled. 
You know what I mean? Like, I mean, just being there too. I shook hands and I'm shooting media. It's incredible. I get to talk to veterans like this. I mean, it's a really incredibly powerful, supportive, transformational group of people. That's really, you know, it's really awesome. I know, I know thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And this is not a sweet brag. This is a, mm-hmm. just a statement from like my career and the things I've done. I put out an all call on my, on my LinkedIn profile. And I was looking for help, trying to get connected to one of three bands, Zach Brown. There's two other, I forget at the moment. And you know who answered that call? Jason Van Camp. Okay, yeah. And he got me connected. This was months ago. Yeah. And he made, because of that connection and his character and what he did, the founder of Warrior Rising, he made it so that my company, with the efforts that we're doing, and his investment into me and to the other network that of all the things that he's doing, he made it so that I can make that moment ridiculously extra special for that person. That is awesome. And just a simple act of kindness of continuing to walk the walk. Incredible. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. Some people think like, oh, I, you know, didn't win like the grant, but there's a lot of people who didn't win the, I mean there's only one spot right or you know first second third but there's a lot of other things that people walked away with even that it's the connection it's you don't just get thrown in back into the world it's you have a forever family that has your back I so, told everyone that I was happy I didn't win and they're like are you serious and I'm like no like I am so happy that Curtis and his wife won that win for them is transformational for their life like what that twenty thousand dollars is going to do for them for their business is absolutely transformational when i heard their story i wanted them to win it's incredible everyone in there was incredible yeah like that that's transformational that unlocks a new life for them it really does but we're kind of getting close to the end but you're i mean pillars of value is already on the you know it's going to be a legacy and i can't wait to continue to watch you grow and do all the different things in the community and you're going to succeed at everything you set out to do so how lastly how can people support pillars of valor coffee your mission how can they follow you etc um you know uh the the best thing that you can do for anyone that is a small business owner whether it's myself or anyone else is click like and share their social media whether you're a purchaser of my product or not Mm -hmm. please just click and engage in the social media content and and share it that's the best thing that you can do for any one of us um if if you want to be a a, um a customer i welcome it um i have six different products that you can try i'm coming out with a product line here uh in the very uh next uh few weeks and and maybe before Mm -hmm. even this airs i'll have my product on, on my website um, and that's because of uh, what happened with Warrior Rising. It gave me a chance to um, be able to invest in some of that product. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm I'm thankful for this tribe, this community, and I'm uh, passionate about continuing to be a part of it, moving forward, and giving back to others. We love to hear it, and we're happy to have you. But thank you, Zach, so much for taking time to share your story, your business, your passion. It's clearly there. Um, and it's awesome to connect for a second time or a third time, I guess, if we count the LinkedIn call. But <laughs> For everyone listening, thank you so much. Right here is where it is the premier place to be as a veteran entrepreneur. If you have any questions, please reach out. And thank you for tuning in.